Now we're going to have some fun <laughs> talking about some AI stuff. AI? Oh, AI. Why, oh, why, Ohio? Beautiful song. Common and green. Why, oh, why, Ohio? Why, oh, why, AI? Well, I'm going to tell you. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it today. And I'll tell you a quick little story about my favorite AI. I love Midjourney for creating images. And you can follow me on Mastodon if you're interested in seeing some images. But the real super genius so far of AI is chat GPT, especially version 4. Now, the difference between version 4 and version 3.5 is massive. You wouldn't think it's massive, but it's massive. For instance, I asked chat GPT 3.5, give me a 30-day vegan uh, meal plan. And don't repeat any meals and tell me how much protein and how many calories. And I want you to give me at least 60 grams of protein in uh, each day and 1,500 calories. And ChatGPT 3.5 did a fine job, okay job, passing grade, B+, plus, of eat this meal, calories, protein, eat this meal, end of day. And then I decided I'll copy and paste and use exactly the same prompt, but in version 4. And version 4 gave me a very, very detailed meal plan that not only mentioned what to eat, but how to make it, and how many calories and grams of protein are in each meal and not just calculated by the end of the day. Now, you wouldn't think that's much. But that's very big and very strange. And over the weekend, working on some interesting things, we wondered about ASL, American Sign Language, as a major. How would you write a proposal to a university, universite, to have them create an ASL major from an ASL minor? And so I just decided, well, let me ask chat GPT. And I just realized I should show you what chat GPT did. It's the most amazing thing. It's hardcoreasl.com forward slash ASL dash M-A-J-O-R major dot PDF. And in three minutes, chat GPT created this amazing freaking document. It's like 15 pages of a proposal. How do I make this bigger? To, of a proposal to create an ASL program at specifically NYU. Just for fun. There's no such thing yet. Maybe. Not right now. So you can go look at this yourself. I'll put this link in our Discord chat and our live links so you can go take a look if you're interested. But talk about amazing. I mean, Jana and I were talking about it. I said, look, for us to do something like this would take, what, a week, two weeks, a month to be this specific? And it's very well written. It's very well thought out. It's absolutely and completely delightful. And then I asked it after Jana's prompting, hey, if you're going to have an ASL major, what classes do you suggest over a four-year period? And it gives me all the classes to use. How many classes, how many credits they should be worth that would have taken us another extra week to figure out. It's shocking. So that is the greatness of AI. And here, so you know that. So we did ASL, major, NYU. NYU has a minor in ASL, not a major. Why not a major if you have a minor? That's the question we're asking. So let's find out by asking ChatGPT. Identify all the ASL major in United States universities. All the current. And this is the power of, of AI, where you have a question. And then you ask and try to get an answer. Oops. I also have to do this. 
in this view. Identify all the current ASL buttons. As an ASL language model, I can't find real-time information or the most current. It always tries to get away with that stuff. Oh, I can't make health recommendations. I'm only a GPT chat bot. By the way, with all the right answers. <laughs> and I tell it, please don't, don't, don't say in conclusion, don't say in summary, don't say, oh, as an AI model, I don't know anything. Don't, just, just tell me. Just, and, and the bot in the past has said, okay, I won't do any of that then, Dave. But it does it anyway. So what do we have for a ASL major programs in these United States? As an AI language model, I can't provide real-time information for the most current list of American Sign Language major programs in the United States. <coughs> However, However, I can provide some prominent programs that were available up until my knowledge cut off <laughs> in September 2021. Keep in mind this list may be outdated, and you should confirm the information with each university directly. Some universities with ASL-related programs include Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., specifically designed for deaf and hard of hearing students and offers a BA in interpretation. University of Rochester, the University in Rochester offers a BA in ASL English interpretation. Well, I'm not asking about interpretation. This is making me angry. California State University Northridge, very good school. This university offers a BA in deaf studies with various concentrations, including ASL English interpretation. I'm not asking about interpreter programs. Western Oregon University. This university offers a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Arts. Okay, I don't want interpreting. I don't want <coughs> ASL interpreting programs. I want ASL as a major program of study results. Enter, and now it's going to apologize. They, oh, I'm so sorry, I misunderstood the question. Watch, it's coming up. I apologize for the confusion. <laughs> I apologize for the confusion. It's important to note that ASL-specific majors are less common than interpreting programs. But there are universities that offer majors or concentrations related to ASL or deaf studies. Here are some examples of programs that focus on ASL or deaf studies as a major concentration as of my knowledge cutoff date of September 20 and 21. So we get Gallaudet, again, University of New Hampshire. That's interesting. Offers a BA in Languages, Literatures, and Cultures with a concentration in ASL and deaf studies. Cal State Northridge, of course, beautiful, offers a BA in Deaf Studies, Deaf Culture, ASL Linguistics, ASL Literature. The University of South Florida in Tampa offers a Bachelor of Arts in Communication Sciences and Disorders. Meow. The concentration in language, speech, and hearing scenes, which also includes ASL. What about the University of Iowa? I heard the University of Iowa has an ASL program. Does the University of Iowa have an, an ASL major? Question mark. Enter. Enter doesn't work in this scene. I have to do this. Here we go. As of my knowledge, cutoff date of September 2021, the University of Iowa does not offer an American Sign Language major. However, they do offer ASL courses and a minor in American Sign Language. The ASL minor at the University of Iowa is housed with the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders. If you're deaf or if you have a hearing loss, you have a disorder. Keep in mind that this information might be outdated, and you should check the University of Iowa's website. <laughs> Why can't you do it? Or contact their Department of Communication for more update 
information on ASL related programs. Okay, all of that's fine. Now, what about diagnosis? Let's see what it says. Let's give it some testing, if you will, and identifying causes and concerns. Now, I, I want to start a new chat, but I don't know if it'll let me. Mm. It did let me start a new chat. And see, the default is 3.5. They wanted to use the slow, crummy one. We don't want that. We want GPT-4. Okay, so let's see if we can do a medical diagnosis. I have pain in my left eye. My groin is sore. I have headaches every day that last for 15 minutes. My lymph nodes are swollen. I have a high fever of 102. What is your non-medical diagnosis of my medical condition? Now, I said non-medical because the first thing it's going to say is, I'm not a doctor. So I'm trying to prompt it to just give me the answer and not do all the excuses. But in my experience, it's going to say I'm not a doctor. I am an AI language model and not a medical professional. Ah. So I cannot provide a diagnosis or medical advice. Oh, this is different. It's important to consult with a healthcare professional about your symptoms for an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. Now, that has changed. You used to be able to put in, you know, this, 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 and this, and it would say, oh, it sounds like, uh, you know, you have this disease or you have that disease. I'm going to try something else. I have a, I have a pain in... Uh, I have a pain in my leg and back when I walk. Could this be sciatica? If yes, why? If not, why not? And now we'll see what it says. It might probably say the same thing. I am not a medical professional. I'm not a doctor, but I can try to help you understand some possible causes of your symptoms. So if you give it symptoms, it'll say, okay, try this. But if you say, I have this and this and this, what do I have? It won't answer that. It's very interesting. It's called having it both ways. And when you're AI, nobody cares. So it says, however, it's essential to consult with a healthcare professional for an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. That being said, ChatGPT4 says, some possible non-medical explanations for your symptoms could be stress or anxiety. Stress can manifest in various physical symptoms, including headaches, muscle tension, and fever. It is essential to manage stress through relaxation techniques exercise, and a healthy diet. Two, viral or bacterial infection. Swollen lymph nodes, fever, and general discomfort can be signs of an infection. Now, see, it, it's going back to our previous conversation where, that it didn't want to answer. Now it's talking about swollen lymph nodes. I didn't say anything about that. I said I had a sore back. So it remembers conversations you've had previously, so keep that in mind. <gasps> It's crucial to see a doctor for a proper diagnosis and treatment in this case. Three, overexertion or muscle strain. If you've been engaging in strenuous physical activities or exercise, it's possible you may have strained or pulled a muscle, calling soreness in your groin and other areas. I didn't ask about my groin. That's the other conversation. Oh, maybe, see, it thought I regenerated that. I didn't want to regenerate. That's why it says two of two. It's making it, it's, I'm making it answer the same question again. For some reason, this, where I said my pain in back is sciatica, it didn't go. So let's try that again. Okay, here we go. I have pain in my leg when I walk. Could this be sciatica? If yes, why? If not, why not? Okay, now we're getting an answer. I am not a doctor, 
But I can provide you with some information about sciatica and potential causes of leg and back pain. Hey, remember, it's essential to consult with a healthcare professional for an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. Sciatica refers to pain that radiates along the path of the sciatic nerve, which branches from your lower back through your hips and buttocks and down each leg. It usually only affects one side of your body, which is very interesting. Shingles is the same way. If you have these marks on two side, on both sides of your body, it's not shingles. Shingles is limited to one side. It's not bilateral. It can irritate. Uh, so, you know, uh, 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 common symptoms of sciatica include pain, numbness, tingling, weakness in the lower back, buttocks, and leg. Your description of leg and back pain when walking could potentially be due to sciatica. Some common causes of sciatica include a lumbar herniated disc. When the soft inner material of a spinal disc bulges or ruptures, it can irritate the nearby sciatic nerve, causing you pain. Two, spinal stenosis. The narrowing of the spinal canal can compress the nerves, including the sciatic nerve, leading to pain and discomfort. Piriformis syndrome. The piriformis muscle on the buttocks can become tight or a spasm, compressing the sciatic nerve and causing you pain. Spondyliosthesis. Spondyli... Spondyliosthesis. A condition in which a vertebrae slips forward over the one below it, potentially compressing the sciatic nerve. How? GPT says there are other possible causes for leg and back pain that are not related to sciatica. Some of these include muscle strains, ligament sprains, or other non neurological issues. Meow. So that's fun, right? So you can really play with ChatGPT, and some people get very upset. Oh, it gives me the wrong answer to a math problem. It didn't code my website right. So what? It's not perfect. People are not perfect. If people were perfect, you wouldn't have to have Google to go double check to see if what they're saying is right. And if you only had Google, you wouldn't have to go other places to see if Google had it right because Google often gets it wrong too. But nobody complains about that. Oh, ChatGPT gave me the wrong answer. It must be terrible. Well, the answer is it's not terrible. Now, finally, we're going to talk about a really fun thing that is on my Apple Watch. It used to be called, I think, Chat GPT for Apple Watch. And then Apple got all fussy because they don't want anything, I guess, in their app store named chat GPT. Now, there are a lot of programs in the Apple Store that are operated and run on the chat GPT engine, the OpenAI engine. But for some reason, Apple doesn't want OpenAI or chat GPT listed in the description of your app. Okay, whatever. So there's this Apple Watch. It's only on your Apple Watch. I think they renamed it PT that uses the Siri integration, I guess, to somehow call responses from ChatGPT and bring the answers to your Apple Watch in either text or spoken voice. So I am going to do this. I don't know. This is my watch. It's that blue thing in the middle right here. That's Petey. So I click on it, and it comes up. And it says, ask me anything. And then I click on that button, yeah? And now you can either type in your question. You can either type in your question, or there's the microphone. And people who have this app say, why would you ever want to type in a long question on your Apple Watch? It's ridiculous. You always want to use your phone, your microphone, on the Apple Watch. And that should be the default. And I agree. So I will use this, and then I will speak into this, and it's going to give me a response, and I'm hoping you'll be able to hear the response. Explain to me the power of Aristotle's poetics in modern drama. 
Then I have to click done. Thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Aristotle's poetics has had a significant influence on modern drama, particularly in terms of its emphasis on plot, character, and spectacle. Many of the principles outlined in the poetics, such as the three-act structure and the notion of catharsis, continue to inform the way that playwrights approach the creation of their works. Additionally, the ideas of unity of time, place, and action are still debated and applied in contemporary theatrical performances. Overall, Aristotle's poetics has provided a framework for analyzing and understanding the dramatic form, which has made it a valuable source for both playwrights and audiences alike. Now that's a wow, right? And, and it's all here. And my Apple Watch just reads me the response. So now I say done, right? Ah. Ask me anything again. So we'll ask another question. Uh, I have sciatica. What is the best way for me to get rid of my pain? Thinking. As an AI language model, I cannot provide medical advice. It's important to consult with a qualified healthcare professional who can evaluate your specific condition and provide appropriate treatment options. They may suggest options such as pain management techniques, physical therapy, or other treatments to alleviate your sciatic pain. Well, now you know it's chat GPT and I'm not messing with you. It won't give me a response. Okay, so let's ask it one more question just for fun. Ask me anything. What is the best way to live stream a show? Thinking? There are several ways to live stream a show, but some of the most popular platforms for live streaming are Twitch, YouTube Live, and Facebook Live. To choose the best option for your specific needs, you should consider factors such as audience size, budget, and technical requirements. Additionally, it's important to make sure you have a reliable internet connection and high-quality equipment to ensure a smooth streaming experience. Well, that was terrific. And it's all true, right? And wants me to reply. I mean, to be able to, at your whim, ask yourself a question that you don't know the answer to, you go to your watch, you click a button, you speak in your question, and you get back a beautiful response that is actually accurate and correct. And it's just amazing. And that's our show.